Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dorothy May Mercer coming to you from Talk Story TV. And we have a very interesting guest today that I guarantee you, you are going to be spellbound. This lady is educated in America and she has her master's degree from uh, Case. Western University, or Case Western Reserve University in art. She's an art major, but uh, lately she hasn't been able to do much with her art because she's had an unfortunate time with some physical problems that uh, have taken her kind of out of circulation for three years. Uh, and you'll see behind her some beautiful paintings, and I, I won't talk the whole time here, but she has got so much that you're going to want to hear about. She was on the radio for many, many years with a program called The Peaceful Planet. And she has a lot of fans that haven't heard from her in a long time. And I think they're going to want to see this show. Uh, she's been on a, a television from Canada, from Toronto, from a, a talk show several times. She was a regular guest there and also in Australia. And she has a lot of skills that we're going to hear about. Mostly it has to do with getting messages from people who have passed over into what we think of as heaven. And she's going to tell you about this. Her name is Marsha McMahon. Um, if I say it, but McMahon. Is that McMahon right? is McMahon. just like Ed McMahon. Yes, thank well, you, Dorothy. So. And so, Marcia, I want to hear more about you and what you've been doing and all these exciting things, a new book and everything. So I'll turn this over to Marcia. Tell us a little bit about why you're here today, Marcia. Well, first of all, I want to thank you personally, Dorothy, for your support and your kindness in offering me this interview. And I've been working on a book. I have two other published books. I'll start with that. I'm okay. one of Princess Diana's main channels in America here. And I used to host the Peaceful Planet show on bbsradio.com. And I enjoyed that for five to six some years and made many world contacts, and it was just a wonderful program. And mm -hmm. um, the program evolved because shortly before I was... A, you know, before I got the show, uh, John Lennon came to me in spirit, and he gave me a few messages that I published in the Princess Die books that I have. The first one I published was called um, uh, Princess Diana's Message of Peace. It's out of print now. Uh, I currently have With Love from Diana, Queen of Hearts. And Diana, on the other side, has been working through me for more than 11 years. Okay, and, I'll interrupt um, you, Marcia. For us, for, for us stupid people out here that uh, don't know how this works, you're just assuming we know what you're talking about. But uh, look, lady, are you trying to tell us that you talked to John Lennon and Princess Diana? I mean, aren't they yes. dead? <laughs> uh, they're in what we call the spiritual realm. Ah. And there are many of us that only need to tune in to the right side of the brain and ask their angels what they need. I did it through prayer and meditation because I was a teacher, an art teacher, for 35 years. Okay. And so I always tuned in to my angels before reporting to work <laughs> because work was so stressful. Well, Marcia, I think a lot of people out there will agree that they have a guardian angel and they know about that, but they don't talk to these angels. How do you do this? 
Well, I've taught classes privately for years over the Internet and at my home personally. But basically, it's a really simple process of just going into meditation and asking your guides and angels or Jesus, whomever you resonate with, um, to, you, you can put a question to them and you can practice and get messages and see if the messages pan out. And mine began to pan out exactly. In is fact, this? I had a message from John Lennon recently, and he mm -hmm. said, get busy on the book because you're going to be getting an, another break. So Marcia, I think that this is but is this something like prayer? A lot of us pray. Is it anything exactly. like that? Oh. Yeah. It, I'm not praying to the souls of John Lennon or of Princess Diana, so let's get that straight. Uh, they're what we would call in the Western tradition saints, quote unquote, or in the Eastern tradition, the ascended masters. And John does not want to be called an ascended master, but I personally feel he is an ascended master because he did his work on earth. And he, by the way, it was his anniversary of his transition to spirit just two days ago. So I feel he is very much behind this interview at this time. But getting back to prayer, it, you, it's prayer and meditation. You empty your thoughts. And basically, one day, Princess Diana came to me in 2001, and she said, would you be willing to be my scribe for your part of the world for, for peace? And I said, of course, yes. And I knew it was her because she appeared to me in my mind's eye, standing very tall. And I had made a connection to her previously, and I felt her all around me, and so on. So that's how the channeling began. And I found before that that I was um, able to connect with Jesus very easily, and I thought everyone could do this. But oh. a lot of people don't practice this, or it's forbidden in the various religious traditions, because religion would have us believe that uh, this can't be done. But it really, really? can. Oh, no. Some of the I think religions that Christians believe that their prayers are answered, and and I've heard a lot of people s say, "Well, I just had this feeling, and you know that the answer was there, or something." I think a lot of people probably don't want to admit it, but they have an idea. Well, that's just it. <laughs> Years ago, I worked at um, a, a church, and I was friends with a lady minister. And we held Bible study on uh, aspects of the divine in the Bible. And uh -huh. she admitted to me that she heard her still small voice within. And sure. I said the same thing. So everybody has the capacity, let's put it that way. But when you're on special assignment, like I've been, then you have the, the power, I guess, or you're given the messages for a higher reason. Mm -hmm. And that differs a little bit from mediumship, which is, just giving confirmation of deceased mm -hmm. loved ones. But I do that too, but that's not my specialty. My specialty seems to be uh, being the pen for these messages of world peace from both Princess Diana and mm -hmm. John Lennon. And I've been working and had the honor of working with both these great Brits for um, seven years with John and 11 or 12, 11, I guess, with Princess Di. And I'm sure that I do. At first, I didn't trust myself, but I've gotten emails from others who also channel Diana or John, and they seem to know exactly what I'm doing and how to advise me. And boy, you know, so I, I quit Amazing. doubting myself. Yeah, it, it was total confirmation. So that's printed in With Love from Diana, Queen of Hearts, the latest release. And then I'm planning to have an ebook with notes from John from across the universe coming out fairly oh, soon. Oh, good. So we'll that'll for be that. thrilling. And I also channel Archangel Michael and Jesus and Mother Mary. Oh, so my. that's a great honor. And some of their messages are included in the little ebook on Amazon Kindle called uh, Archangel Michael's Ascension Teachings. And that's mm -hmm. teachings about the unusual times in which we live, which Christians would refer to primarily as the quote-unquote rapture. Mm -hmm. So it's basically yeah, it the same thing. 
Mm-hmm. But universally, um, I, I try to work more universally so as not to offend one religion or another. So good idea. It, it fits into yeah, and it I can't help but think that some will be offended, and I try not to go there. You know on those types of shows. <laughs> hey, let's just say if somebody's offended, turn it off. You don't have to that's, listen. That's exactly <laughs> it. And I myself came from a, a Catholic background, and I was raised to believe in St. Joan of Arc, who also heard from Archangel Michael. Oh. So very special people are given the power to use these talents for the benefit of mankind. If you stop your channeling, or you start to get greedy with it, or you do something that offends spirit or God in some way, you will lose that ability. And there are many psychics that have gone very big, and they have lost the true ability to give correct messages. I'm not going to say who that is, but I've known of them. So, it's it's a, I believe it's a gift from God, but also one that needs to be cultivated. And if you learn to know who your spirit guide is or your guardian angel and commune with them along with Jesus or Buddha or whomever you connect with spiritually, then it becomes a very enriching personal experience for you. So it's all good. (laughs) It's not evil. It's not the work of the devil. But some people would have it be that. (laughs) People have to believe what they believe, you know. Well, a lot of them are brainwashed, you know, by the teachings of various religions. So they Uh, can believe what they want to believe. But I know that this is all good. At least it has been for me. Tell us a little bit more about John. I know you want to talk about your book that's coming out in a few days. Yes, it's called Notes from John, Messages from Across the Universe. And he asked me to use that title, so I'm not trying to, uh, you know, take anything uh, from the song Across the Universe, but he frequently references the word Across the Universe. Uh, And, of course, the song Across the Universe was actually sent out by NASA um, to the star Polaris, the North Star. The radio waves were sent out in case there was life out there. And John comments about things like that in the book. But Mm -hmm. his primary reason for the creating of this book with me is it's a collaborative effort. And how it all got started was I began to receive lyrics in the silence from John. And I already had a radio program called the Forum for World Peace. And I already had messages from John, but not lyrics. And then he began to send me lyrics, and he asked me to contact Robert Murray of The Star Still Shine. So I did, and uh, in about a a week, I heard, excuse me, back from Robert in an email, and he said, John has something he wants you to hear. I thought, what is going on? Maybe John is creating music. You know, that's what my thought was, but I didn't get anything from Murray in a long time. So I went to the P.O. box, and I'm listening to uh, the the old Beatles tunes, the oldies, uh, with love from me to you. And it's running through my head as I go to the P.O., and I open the P.O. box, and in the bottom of the junk mail is the CD called With Love from John. Now, how weird is that, that I had that in my head? And John sent me the CD that Bob Murray created. So we've been on a collaborative effort project for about seven years, and I channeled in all of the lyrics, or a lot of the lyrics, to Bob Murray's great songs. But the copyright remains in my name and in Bob Murray's name, and we don't say that John actually gave this to us, but we know that we channeled this from John. Mm -hmm. So that's the best way to explain it. Amazing. Now, this Bob Murray is from Australia, or have I got that wrong? Bob Murray's from Canada, so Canada. he's on another, oh. in another place, too. And he's been getting messages from the other side, and he has quite a few books, and he's a marvelous author and channel. And he's he told me that George Harrison, the late, 
ex-Beatle George tells him what buttons to push on uh, the band for a box, and he's no musician, and neither am I. And so George is creating these tunes. They record them in the band in the box in MP3 or MP4. And then I was using the songs on my program, The Peaceful Planet, to help create peace on this earth. My main focus with both Princess Diana and John Lennon is to help. They're both trying from the other side to get peace on the planet mm -hmm. in both different ways. John thinks music and harmony creates peace for everyone, and the lyrics will stick in one's head. And with his great work with the Beatles, no one can dispute the fact how That's great true. they were. And he, how great he was, and Yoko for that matter. All they were. All of them were way ahead of the, the curve. So then Princess Diana, however, has diplomatic solutions for peace that have gone on, and all my books have been read by the various important diplomats here in America and presidents, etc. But that will not be admitted by any of them because they don't want the world to know that, you know, they listen to psychics or read my books. But <laughs> by hook or by crook, pe different people have sent them the book. Or in one case, um, oh, when Obama was running for office, I was there at the um, at the time that he was choosing his vice president at um, the old Capitol where my husband worked. And so I got a copy of Princess Diana's book to his top eight. So I believe that he has looked at the book. And Diana confirms that uh, absolutely these messages got through to George W. Although they were about peace and he created the war, you can only go so far, you know, in terms of... Oh, I'm sorry, just a minute. Something came up. That was the uh, unfortunate button. Um, that was part of Radical Dolphin. I didn't mean to hit that button. See, some of the songs were created and the lyrics were put together and they were used for the show. But I don't think they'll record too well for this show, so we'll... You know, just leave it at that. But I wouldn't mind reading some of the lyrics or some of John's sure. messages. Sure. Okay. So I've got um, this uh, message from John, and I have some lyrics from him as well. And they're so phenomenal. There's nothing, no way that I could ever have made this up. So this is titled... There's two versions, Remarkable Diana and Remarkable Nebulae. And uh, this was um, channeled in about 206. And remember, the song belongs to Robert Murray. Remarkable Nebulae, remarkable in every way perfect, the nebulae are shining bright beyond the sun. Beyond the sun and stars are nebulae shining deep within the center of the cosmos. They are shining away, creating life and lives within a universe of time, far away from us. Yet close enough to see that there is more, so much more than we could ever dream possible. Imagine that we see something half a billion years ago, shining in the star clusters at night, remembering half a million light years away, a speck of stardust shining out and singing for me and for you, a way of looking up into and seeing the stars shining away in time, distant time and places within our solar system and beyond it. Remarkable in every way perfect, that is how they shine forevermore. Yeah. So that's um, the second verse of Remarkable Diana. And so I have another short message, if I may, from John about what he wanted to convey to his fans. And then I have some messages from Princess Diana on the Divine Feminine, too. Okay. So I hope we have time for that. Um, well, we've got about 12 minutes left. Let's see what I can provide you here. I'm looking... Oh, I've got the messages kind of mixed up at this point. <laughs> I yeah. had it. Well, I've got, I've got the book in front of me. I'm furiously editing, etc. 
Um, I called it the Strawberry Fields Remembrance because I saw the fans on TV uh, in the 25 years after John sometime in 2006. And as I watched the fans gather at Strawberry Fields in New York City, um, an image of John began to form in my mind's eye. And I felt his presence stronger than ever before. Mm. And he stood before me, open-faced, smiling, and keen to give a heartwarming message to his fans all over the world. And so I'm now looking for that message. Here it is. It's called John's 25th Anniversary Message. By the way, the painting up there this way, mm -hmm. no, this way. Yeah, I is John across the universe, and I have paintings available from my website, Diana Speaks to the World. John's 25th anniversary okay. to his fans. Okay. And this was channeled December the 8th. And by the way, we're very close to that time, so he, he w wanted this on the air because his sad anniversary was just two days ago. So if Spirit didn't plan this show. I don't know who did. <laughs> this, the, the message. John. Hey, John, it's me, Marsha. I'm, and I'm saying, hi, John. And he, I, I'm saying, what do you have to say? And he says, I'm showing you how I look. You see, no scars, no fear. My hair is shorter and I'm clean shaven. I do look every bit myself, but in spirit, not in form. We're quite excited to be on your show, Marsha. Don't worry too much about Yoko. She's all for world peace, and when we, she does hear from you, you know she's gonna love you. We wish to say, say thanks to all my fans for all the good times. We want to ask people to open their hearts to Murray's music and to say that it really is me through Bob and to say that your lyrics are really mine through you. Your lyrics were good, but not complete. We hope to do more with you to rock and roll the half beats again, instead of the Beatles, they call themselves the half beats on the other side. And then he closes out with this line Imagine peace, imagine love. Soon your world will eventually get this message and will be on our way to ascension. Ciao, John. So, how many that imagine years, he's... How many years was that? Um, that was channeled in 2006. And when did he die? Did he died um, December the 8th, I believe, 1980. 1980? Oh. I thought it was 1980. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so it was either 80 or 81 because I remember the day he died and I heard on the radio and I was in tears, as were most of the millions all around the world. So he told me that there were many years and many tears that he suffered on the other side from that terrible, terrible thing that happened to him. And he didn't have, a, he had been creating music with other channels throughout the world, but there were no producers in heaven to get it out, so to speak. So I really believe that John um, knew that I was producing a new radio show. He even encouraged me to change the name of the radio show from the Forum for World Peace to um, the Peaceful Planet. He thought it had a better ring to it. So I followed his instructions. He's predicted many, many things for me that have come true. So it's all in the book about to be born. <laughs> and it's going to be an e-book at first, in a yeah. way, uh, right. on Amazon. <clears throat> on right. the Kindle, yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, messages from John. Notes from John. Notes from Notes John. Notes from John. Messages from across the universe. Okay. And that's what he asked me to title it. So. If anybody has a problem with Across the Universe, I, I know it's a song, and I hope 
nobody is bothered by that, but that's what he asked me to title it. The title yeah. can be changed if it's, titles if it's a problem. Are, titles are not copyrighted, so you have every right to use those words in the title. Nobody owns across the universe as far as the words themselves. I mean, The Beatles own the song across yeah. the universe, yes. uh, and yeah, probably Yoko owns the rights to anything produced or written oh, by John. But, I imagine yeah. so. But it's not the song that we're talking about. It's the reference to the many times he uses the words in the book. So I thought that was a very cool title. But, you know, if anybody has a problem, they need to contact me right away because the book's about to be born. <laughs> so I, I have some messages, too, from Princess Diana, but I don't know if we're out of time. No, I have seven minutes. All right, I, I'd like to let the audience know that there are a few copies left on Amazon of the book With Love from Diana, Queen of Hearts, and that it's available on my website, too, if you want a signed edition. It's discounted, I, and I have, I think, one copy left, but more can be ordered, but that would take a little bit of time. So... Uh, it's a really fine book, and it's all about diplomatic solutions to world peace. And I'll, we'll, I will read portions of the message from uh, Princess Diana that gives you, a, you know, kind of the essence of the work that I've done. But I could have five more books with her right now because I still work with her, and she's still intent on world peace. So the message is titled Princess Diana on the Divine Feminine and her life. And this was channeled on June the 3rd, 2006. It's posted on my website index. Marsha, Diana, I'm finally here at your service. Diana, darling, I'm so proud of your fine work with spirit and that you're putting your beautiful program on the air once more. We in spirit say bravo to your efforts, which will not go unnoticed this time. We are equally delighted to see that you're in communication with Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary, for this is indeed an era like no other to emphasize the divine feminine. Even as myself, I was representative of that whilst living on earth. My mission was to give each person a feeling of worth and love in my touch and in my smile. I did indeed embody the divine feminine whilst on earth, also through my fashion statement, allowing me to speak to the mass consciousness without having to say a word. For as you well know, the palace forbade me to speak openly, and when I did speak, for instance, about my marriage, then all hell broke loose. In it is indeed time for the divine feminine to be acknowledged and brought forth. For it will be the women to end the wars that men begin, and the women who lead the way in the new age for mankind. Women have the love within their hearts, and it takes a woman to do so many things for this world. Likewise, men will have to bend more to compassion, to truth, and to allowing shared power for this new age, the so-called Aquarian age. I was a way shower in my life as Princess Diana and a superb example amongst the people of all the feminine could truly accomplish. It was my honor to serve and to continue to serve for the benefit of mankind, which is what I am doing with you, darling Marshall. For our, in our giving birth, we are nurturers of the spirits of men. In this case, of course, my fine sons, Princes William, Princes William and Harry. May I then turn to world affairs? Yes, of course, Diana. Indeed, the world finds itself in a sad state of affairs regarding Iraq and the many revelations. All war is a crime against humanity. When will the mass consciousness realize this truth? 
Martian, you indeed speak great truth, Diana. Is there anything on Iran then? Indeed, I am getting to that. We commend the fine piecework of the Secretary for Rice for allowing diplomatic ties to resume with Iran. Indeed, the whole entire UN and world community need to gather around this mounting storm with regards to it, her nuclear ambitions. If she does acquire the use of the nuclear arsenal, she will use it on both Israel and the United States. So we have everything to gain and nothing to lose by offering her a full plate of goodies, so to speak. And that did not occur, by the way. But Iran, she still warns about Iran and the fact that Israel might go in. I channeled the recent message that she warned that Israel was about to launch an attack on Iran's nuclear facility and that look out because Israel could be wiped off the map. So I sent that message out to my list, which has grown smaller over the years because I'm not on here, and I asked everybody to pray for peace um, between uh, countries, especially that Barack Obama and Netanyahu could come to some agreement not to bomb Iran because she's saying that Iran will bomb back and wipe out the whole state of Israel. But, you know, it hasn't happened yet, and I, I thank my lucky stars that it hasn't. But uh, we need to look for that in the news because if it should happen, it could be very disastrous. So she says the book, and she's referring to With Love from Diana, can totally prevent a nuclear holocaust. My love, peace, and divine blessings, Diana, Princess of Peace and Goddess of the Peaceful Planet. And that's how she ends the message. So you see, she's very aware of world affairs. Let's not focus on the negative. So far, it hasn't happened. And she always wants and asks people to continue to pray for Iran, the leaders there, and the people of Israel and the people of the United States to avert such a disaster. And she says the possibility is there, but my angels told me that actually there would be no, no nuclear war before the ascension, which Christians refer to as the rapture, and that is just weeks away, according to Archangel Michael in my other ebook. Well, so. we're out of time. Do you have any... Anything more you want to get in? Any last words? Um, thank you for interviewing me, Dorothy. You're a wonderful person, and I so appreciate this opportunity to be back up on air after battling cancer for three years. I was stage four, and my life was saved, really, uh, through Jesus, Archangel Michael, and Princess Diana, and that's a story for another day. Well, we need you, Marcia, so I hope that we can have another interview, and I'm sorry we have to end this so soon, but uh, that's, the way it, that's the way the old cookie crumbles, I guess. That's showbiz, <laughs> as you say. You did okay. a marvelous job, and thank you for allowing me the pleasure of being with you You're on very air. You're welcome, and thank you for your interview. And so this is Dorothy May Mercy signing off for Talk Story TV. God bless you. Goodbye. God bless you, too.